Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're going to be doing an acrylic notebook cover tutorial. Now you might remember the last one I did not too long ago and I had asked you guys if you wanted to see more videos using this notebook cover blank and it was a unanimous yes. <laughs> so here we are and this video will serve more as like an inspiration type video rather than a really in-depth tutorial. So if you're new to these acrylic blank notebooks, you might wanna go watch that other video first. I'm gonna link it down below in the description box. I'm also gonna link all the products that you see in this video down there too. You might even find some discount codes. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to want to start by prepping your blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the protective paper off of just one side of this notebook blank. We're going to leave the other side on almost through the whole duration of this process if we can. Once we get that done, you're going to want to lightly sand the surface of your blank. I've got like an 80 grit sanding block here and we're just going to scuff up that whole surface and then I will wipe it off with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels. Okay, now that we're all prepped and ready to go, I'm going to glitter one side of my notebook blank. We've got 30 milliliters of epoxy already mixed here and I'm adding just enough glitter to make sure that I have like solid saturation of glitter throughout my epoxy without changing the consistency of the epoxy, okay? So you don't wanna add too much, but you don't wanna add too little, all right? So we're just gonna get that all mixed in really well and then I'm going to spread it onto one side of my notebook blank using a butter spreader. So if you guys ever seen any of my keychain tutorials, this is a very similar type deal. Don't worry about those holes too much, okay? If any epoxy gets in there, it's just gonna come right out through the hole. So don't freak out about it. Um, but you wanna make sure that you just spread this on nice and evenly. You want to make sure that you have enough to cover your whole blank, okay? And you don't want to have like too little because if you don't put enough on there, it's going to look like ripply or weird, okay? So finding that solid balance is key here. All right, and then once I get this all spread out nicely and I've got everything covered, I'm going to put it on a raised level surface to dry. So if you have like some red solo cups or something that you could place underneath this, you want to place that on a level surface to dry. The reason you want to have it level or raised up and not just sitting flat against a table to dry is because if the epoxy comes through those holes, you don't want to epoxy your blank onto the table or whatever and make sure that you have something underneath it to catch any drips that might might occur okay so here i am just getting this all spread out i'm going to zap it with my torch really quick to pop any bubbles and then we're going to put it in its safe place to dry so we're going to let that glittered side dry for about 8 to 12 hours before we move on to our next step um, so now that my glittered side is dry i'm going to show you how we're going to do the front of this notebook blank I'm going to first cut approximately what we would need for the pattern vinyl because I'm going to coat the whole front of this notebook blank with pattern vinyl. This is patterned adhesive vinyl from the vinylcottageshop.com. I'll have their website as well as a discount code linked below in the description box. So I'm going to just trace around my acrylic blank with my craft knife to get the amount of vinyl that we need. Being sure to pay attention to the seam allowance that is on this pattern vinyl. You'll notice there's like a white edge around it. We wanna make sure that we do account for that and not cut off too little um, from what we need. After I have that approximate size cut out, I am going to cut the quote out that I want to show up um, through the pattern vinyl with my Cricut. Um, so you'll want to position the quote that we're going to cut out of the vinyl. You want to position that so that it cuts it in the correct place on your cutting mat. 
I know that sounds really confusing, but you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. So here it is. I've, I'm, I've cut the quote out of my vinyl, and we're just going to weed out only the quote so that the pattern vinyl is all left there. And you can cut this pattern vinyl on just your regular vinyl setting on your Cricut, okay? And then once I get all of that weeded, I'm just going to transfer that vinyl piece onto the front of my acrylic blank. So I'm going to remove that remaining paper, protective paper thing, okay? So we have our glittered side, and then we have our fresh clean side here, and that's where we're going to apply our pattern vinyl. So I'm going to tape this blank with the glittered side down, clean side up. We're going to tape that to uh, this ruler mat here. The reason I didn't just apply the pattern vinyl right over that glittered side is because there's it's not completely smooth. There's too much of a rounded edge there, so you would have a really hard time getting your vinyl to lay completely flat around those edges versus just having it laid totally flat over that clean front, okay? So we wanna tape this acrylic blank lined up on our cutting mat here, and I taped it just to keep it steady. And then I'm going to get a nice big sheet of transfer tape, and I'm gonna put that over my pattern vinyl, trying to line it up with the grid of my transfer tape. All right, and smooth it out really well with your vinyl scraper there. Then I'm gonna turn it face down against my table and try and loosen that paper backing off of the vinyl really quick, just to make sure that this will transfer without any kind of drama. Okay, and then once we're ready to roll, I am going to line up my vinyl with the lines on my cutting mat as a way to help me keep everything straight. And once I'm sure I have everything pretty straight, I'm going to anchor one side of my vinyl to the cutting mat with some painter's tape, okay? That's just going to help keep everything nice and steady for me. And also get your ruler out and make sure that you measure twice so you just have to cut once, okay? We also want to make sure that those words that we cut out from our, pat our pattern vinyl end up nice and straight on our notebook blank. I'm going to use the hinge method to apply my vinyl. So we're just going to peel up half of that pattern vinyl trim off half of the paper backing there, wipe everything down real quick to make sure there's no debris, and then we'll go ahead and lay that half of the pattern vinyl first, making sure everything's pulled nice and taut. Then I'll just smooth everything out with my vinyl scraper, and we'll repeat that same step, those same steps on the other side and get the other side smoothed out. And we're going to trim off any of that excess vinyl with a sharp craft knife. So be very careful when you're doing this. Try to cut away from yourself if you can. Um, but you're just going to run your blade along the edge of your notebook cover to trim off that excess. If you have any air bubbles, you could just pop them with your craft knife and smooth them out with your finger. Okay, you're not going to be able to see any of that. Uh, once we epoxy over it. So don't stress about that too much. And another thing that will help you get those edges nice and crisp is use a sanding block to sand around the edges. If you find that you're having a hard time really cutting as close as you possibly can, particularly around the corners, sanding the vinyl against the edge is going to really, really help you get that nice crisp finish, okay? Um, once we got all the edges cleaned up, you're going to want to take your craft knife and go around all the holes and dig out the vinyl from the holes. So I just poke my craft knife in there and then run it along the edge of the hole to cut out the vinyl from there. Now that we've got all that cleaned up and ready to go, we're going to tape off the back side in prep for epoxying over that vinyl. So I've just got some thick masking tape here and I'm going to tape along the edges of the back glitter side and I'm really going to press that tape firmly to make sure none of the epoxy seeps through. 
using my vinyl scraper. You are going to want to make sure that you poke out the holes from your tape before you epoxy as well because you don't want to trap epoxy in the holes. You want that epoxy overflow that might get into the holes. The, you want to give it the ability to just flow through. So don't forget to poke holes in your tape too. Now we're ready to apply the final coats of epoxy. I already applied a coat over the vinyl earlier that I let dry for about four to six hours. And here I am applying what I'm hoping will be the final coat. This is another one that I made using very similar techniques as we did with this um, flamingo one. I just didn't do like the peekaboo vinyl. Um, I just did a really simple, you know, piece of vinyl over the bottom portion of my blank and then I did the glitter and epoxy mixture over the top half. All right, so I'm just spreading on my epoxy with the butter spreader. You want to make sure that you are not using too little because it will not really self-level into a super smooth coat if you don't add enough, okay? So you'll find lots of ripples and things if you aren't spreading on enough on there. So I found that it takes about 20 to 30 milliliters to fully coat these guys, okay? So anyway, once you get your epoxy spread all over there, you're gonna wanna hit it with your torch to pop any bubbles and then place it on a raised level surface to dry, okay? So you wanna let these dry for a good eight to 12 hours before you mess around with them. And obviously make sure that you give your epoxy a full 72 hour cure time before you send them out. If you are sending them to a friend or giving them as a gift or whatever. And obviously your full cure times may vary based on the brand and type of epoxy resin that you're using. Now that I've showed you how to do the glitter and vinyl ones, I wanna show you how I would do a fully glittered one. I've already prepped and sanded my acrylic blank cover and I have the paper backing still on one side of the blank, okay? So the back side still has its paper backing on it. And I'm just gonna spray paint the base colors for kind of like a gypsy leopard design. So I started with the gold through the center. That's where my spots will be or like my main focal point. And then I went in with like a lavender and then a uh, harvest grape color on the outer corners. And give this plenty of time to dry before you move on to the next step. Our next step will be to apply the glitter and I'm gonna be using epoxy resin as my adhesive for my glitter today. Um, I did not let my spray paint dry long enough and so as a result, it got all smudged, but no big deal. Um, I did mix five milliliters of epoxy uh, and we used less than one milliliter on this notebook blank, so spread a very, very thin amount. And then I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle on my glitter. I'm gonna glitter this the same way that I would a tumbler, which is I'm gonna start with very light coats of glitter to kind of establish where I want my colors laid out. And also, you know, trying to establish a blend and then we'll build up coverage from there, okay? So if you guys have ever seen any of my tumbler videos, this is the same type of technique. All right, and so between each color, I kind of just tapped the corner of my acrylic blank onto the parchment paper to tap off any of the excess glitter, and then I move on to the next color. All the colors that you're seeing on this are from the Flynn and PG palette. Obviously, my favorite colors. <laughs> so I will have some substitute colors in the description box if you weren't lucky enough to get a palette, but these colors work so beautifully together. Absolutely love it for a gypsy leopard design. So here we are. We're just lightly sprinkling out our rough draft for our glitter and once I'm really happy with everything, I just go back through all the colors to build up the coverage that I'm wanting. When glittering this, I'm going to set it down to dry for about two to three hours before I move on to the next step. For our next step, you're just going to want to really aggressively tap off all the excess glitter. You can even brush off the glitter. We really want to just try and get off as much excess as we can before we paint on the leopard spots. So I wanted to do 
baby pink leopard spots using chit chat also from the Flynn and Peachy palette. I did mix a little bit of Chantilly glitter into the chit chat to give it a little bit of sparkle. And I'm applying just some amazing sealer as my adhesive for the glitter. This amazing sealer is from Illumilite. It's pretty much just like Mod Podge. It just has less of a smell and it's a little thicker. Okay, so I am using a little makeup brush to apply the glitter in these shape spots. It helps if you have uh, some leopard print kind of sitting next to you as a guide for how you want to paint your spots. And then once I've got all the glue applied, I'm just going to sprinkle the glitter over. The nice thing about matte glitters and using them for leopard spots is they don't require a colored base paint and you get great coverage just from one coat. So I love using the matte glitters for my leopard spots. And again, if you want to mix in a little bit of white sparkle just to give it a little extra spice, you can do that too. So after I get my leopard spots glittered, I'm going to really tap off all that excess glitter and I'm going to set it aside to dry for at least a couple hours before we epoxy over this. I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed here and now that my leopard spots are dry, we're ready to put on the first coat. So I'm going to spread this on with a gloved finger this time to make sure I get everything nicely coated. And I do have my notebook blank on a raised surface, okay? So we're going to get this all evenly coated. I'm going to take what's left in my epoxy resin and dump it into two other little medicine cups. And I'm going to mix in some gold mica powder into one. And then I'm going to mix some of that chit chat glitter into the other. We're going to mix it really well with our stainless steel stir stick. And then I'm going to apply the gold mica first. And I'm going to apply it just with like the edge of my stir stick here with not a lot of rhyme or reason. I just don't want to add too much. You want to add, like avoid just pouring it on or getting any pools of resin because we don't, less is more in this case, okay? And after I get those gold lines kind of drawn on there with my stir stick, I'm gonna go through with my heat gun that has like a like concentrated nozzle thing at the end. I don't know what it's called, but I will link this heat gun down below in the description box. It is so amazing, I absolutely love it. Um, direct heat and like air pressure right at your gold lines that you just did to kind of fan them out. And you're going to see that really pretty lacing from your mica as it skips over that epoxy. So beautiful. You just want to spread it out a little bit. If you got too much spreading or you're, you find that you just got too much gold, just take a, gold, a gloved finger and kind of scoop some of it out if there's any gloopy spots. Okay, and then once you've got that where you want it, you're just going to take some of that epoxy resin that has the chit chat mixed into it, and I'm just going to very lightly drizzle that kind of through the areas where I have the gold mica. And then once I've got that down, I'm also going to sprinkle in a little bit of chunky glitter. For this one, I'm going to be using Bertha. I love this chunky glitter mix. This is from Peachy Olive Glitters as well. And we're just gonna hand sprinkle that in here and there as just some extra detail. Now that we're all done with that, I'm gonna set this on a raised and level surface to dry for about eight to 12 hours before we move on to the next step. So here my blank is totally dry and I just wanna clean up some of the stuff from these edges before I move on to the final coat. So. I've got my craft knife here and I'm just going to cut off any kind of excess epoxy and stuff that might have migrated its way to the edge of our blank. Take a coarse grit sanding block and I'm just going to sand down the edges a bit. You're going to find that you'll have some sharp bits from your glitter. No big deal. Just sand that down a bit with your uh, 
sanding block there and it's going to come out really smooth really easily you might find that you do need to do some more kind of cutting with your craft knife along those edges just to really clean them up and get any excess epoxy off also going to want to go around those holes with your craft knife and just kind of dig out any excess like glitter or epoxy that might be in the notebook holes and then we're going to clean this up with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and now we're ready to apply hopefully what will be the final coat of epoxy <laughs> so i think i've got like 20 milliliters of epoxy here and we're just going to spread it on just like we did before and using our butter knife to spread everything out. And then if you need to use a gloved finger to kind of get in and around the holes, you can do that too. And then once we've got the epoxy all spread on nice and evenly, you're just going to go over it with your torch and again put it. All right, and so I finally got these all nice and smooth. I'll be honest, those more like complicated ones definitely took a couple more coats than I had anticipated to get them perfect, but no big deal. Um, for the back panels on these, I just did the single glitter and epoxy mixture on one side and that was it just kept it simple okay and if you're just doing the single glitter color like that they're actually pretty easy you know like that one just took one coat with the glitter and epoxy mixture over it and you know if you just wanted to add a simple decal to that and then you know a thin layer of epoxy over your decal it would be super easy Anyway, but the last step is to just clean up the edges with a craft knife. Get all that extra epoxy scraped off of there. It should pop right off. You might have to run your craft knife around in some of those holes if you get a little too much epoxy in the holes. Um, on one of them, I had to take like a uh, bead reamer tool and force it through and then scrape out the inside of the hole with my craft knife because it got way too much epoxy in it, okay? Not a big deal though. Um, you can see here where it was a little more difficult to remove the paper backing um, just because some epoxy really got pulled up on there, but it wasn't a big deal. None of it seeped through to the actual acrylic, so that's nice. Just a little bit more challenging to remove everything. And again, we're just going around the edges with our craft knife, scraping off any of that extra epoxy. Super easy to clean these up. And the very last step <laughs> is assembling them with the paper fillers. So this is A5 six hold filler paper. All you have to do is look on Amazon for A5 six hole filler paper and you'll see a ton of options. I will link some of my favorites down below. I also got some A5 six hole dividers. Uh, so all I really do is just take one of those packs of paper. I think it's like maybe a pack of 50 sheets, I think, and then layer, you know, you know, a good amount of the paper and then a divider and then I'll assemble the notebook with these little rings. These are also really to easy to find on Amazon. I will link these ones down below. I'll also link the ones that are connected that look like this. So this, these ones are nice because they're not all floppy like the ones I'm using. However, they come in limited colors, whereas the single rings come in a ton of colors and I like to have options. <laughs> So anyway, you just assemble your notebook like that and you're finally done. So I love how these came out. Again, they were a little bit more work than I had anticipated, but it definitely paid off. I love the results. Um, all these designs were so much fun to work with. I love putting glitter on these. I think next time I might just keep it a little more simple <laughs> and not go so crazy, but I think they're super cute. So let me know what you thought in the comments. If you guys make some of these, be sure to tag me on social media so I can see what you come up with. I think these are so much fun. And you guys, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a new video. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. We'll see you soon.
And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.